Regardless of if you believe in it or not, there's no denying that the concept of hell has made its way into all sorts of pop culture, and of course comic books are no exception. Now, I've done a video in the past about the DC Comics version of Lucifer, but that had a lot of you guys asking about what the DC Comics version of HG Double Hockey Sticks was like in the multiverse. But for that, it's such a huge, dense, and complicated subject that I could use a little bit of help. Oh, Magic 8-Ball, who's gonna be my guest star for this episode? Oh, ah, uh, hey there, kids. We were just... Oh! <laughs> Comic drink. Are we talking about... Uh, heck. If so, I'm an expert. Well, hello there, YouTubes, Mr. Creepypasta. Yeah, I think you're gonna do just fine. I'll stop my over-campy acting and get right into the episode now. Well, hell, or at least something similar to it, is a concept that appears in many religions and mythologies for centuries as a place of eternal punishment. Fire, brimstone, demons... Non-stop Nickelback music, YouTube comments, movie marathons of the room... The Hell of DC Comics first appeared in DC Special Series number 8 in 1977, but it was a more cliché and cartoony version with a straight-up stereotypical devil with red skin and horns. Oh, and he's also friends with Hitler. Later on though, DC started taking Hell more seriously. From here on out, when DC Comics usually dips into the subject material, they do so under their darker imprint for more mature titles called Vertigo. This is where most of Swamp Thing, Hellblazer, Sandman, and Lucifer books were published. It's been the subject of debate for years if some Vertigo books have their own universe, or if they're a part of the main DC continuity. The reason why this is so important is because most of what we know about DC's Hell comes from Vertigo titles, and there have been more than a few inconsistencies with how the Realm of the Damned has been handled. But hey, thanks to the, um, creative mind of Grant Morrison, DC Comics has officially set boundaries for their multiverse, and at the time of this recording, this is the most accurate map of it. This map more or less proves that Vertigo is a part of the main DC canon. But don't worry if you're confused by all this, because today we're only going to be taking a look at this part right here, the Sphere of Gods. These eight realms are metaphysical, meaning they break the conventional laws of being, knowing, substance, cause, identity, time, and or space. In layman's terms? They're alternate spooky dimensions that work differently from Earth. Each realm in the Sphere of Gods has a polar opposite, which lies on the other side of the sphere. Obviously, the opposite of Hell is Heaven. It's quoted as being Heaven's dark reflection, like a landscape hanging inverted in the waters of a lake. Now, one other thing I'd like to point out is that Hell is completely different and separate from Underworld, where the Greek god Hades rules, along with other places like the Phantom Zone. That's right here. It's also worth noting that while this map to the multiverse was made in 2014, it's somewhat unknown when DC started adhering to its constraints. There are some examples of the aforementioned inconsistencies, like the ferocious Hound Cerberus, which appears in Hell during the 1999 storyline Day of Judgment, despite the fact that Hades is, as we mentioned, in the underworld. Hell takes things a step further on the metaphysical side and looks different for each person who enters it, giving everyone their own personal Hell. At least, that's what's said about it in this issue of Harley Quinn. Because yes, Harley Quinn went to hell once. For me, that's a place where horror was never invented. For Drake, I'm pretty sure that's a place where all back issues are burned immediately after printing. Do not even joke about that. Now, as we've seen in the Rain and Hell storyline, hell can be broken up into nine provinces. There's Pandemonium, the Odium, the Gull, Praetori, Internecia, Ament, Labyrinth, Ur, and Purgatory, with the Hell City Dis being the realm's capital. Later though in the New 52, it's said that Hell has quote, as many countries as there are souls. As for the demons who reside inside of Hell, they seem to follow a certain hierarchy. The first to rule was a companion of DC's version of God, the Presence. He had fallen from grace and became the appropriately named the First of the Fallen. Second was the former angel Samuel, who was now going by the new name, Lucifer Morningstar. And here's a plug for my video on Lucifer. It's a good one. Go watch it. Lucifer, not one for really following the rules, hated the notion that there is no free will, just the destiny that the Presence has set in stone. In an attempt to get away from his father's omniscience, Lucifer held a rebellion of angels in heaven. But the Presence ended the war by giving Lucifer the realm farthest away from heaven to rule. Hell. And he even allowed all the fallen angels to reside there. Lucifer is way stronger than the first of the fallen. So yeah, he was the top dog for 10 billion years. Then when the original blackness of the universe before life was created became sentient and challenged war on heaven, 
because comics, a civil war broke out in Hell. This led to the Triumvirate, where Lucifer co-ruled alongside the demons Azazel and Beelzebub. Despite this, Lucifer was more or less the most in charge of Hell, as is evidenced by when he got bored, sent all the demons out of Hell and closed it. Yes, Lucifer closed Hell. To open a bar in Los Angeles. However, Lucifer got bored of ruling, so he gives the key to Hell to the Sandman, Dream, who in turn gives it to the angels Remiel and Dumas. Dumas gives the key to this guy named Christopher Rudd, who dies, prompting Lucifer to give the key to his consort, Mazikeen. This might seem straightforward, but in the 90s and early 2000s, DC started going around claiming that this guy was the Lord of Hell. His name is Neron, but it turns out that even Neron has higher-ups? If that sounds confusing, Welcome to comics. Neron would appear from time to time as a tempter, like this one time in The Flash, where he unleashed Undead on Earth, hoping to steal, and I kid you not, the love between The Flash, aka Wally West, and his wife, Linda. Yup. Neron was finally finished off by a demon named Satanus, who was betrayed by his sister, Lady Blaze. This is strange because Lucifer left Mazikeen in charge during his solo series in 2006, and she continues to rule in Lucifer Volume 2 in 2016. However, Reign in Hell ended in 2009, leading to more inconsistencies. And again, if you're confused about all of this, then you're not alone. I talk about comic books for a living, and I don't even understand this shit. But Drake, aren't we missing someone? I read on the internet that Superman was the Lord of Hell once. Okay, first off, he never took the throne. And second, that was just some weird pseudo-dream sequence stuff that literally has never come back. It was just a weird, non-consequential romp for issue 666 that I honestly might make a video on sometime in the future. Now, of course, Hell has a class system outside of its ruler. Typically, the oldest demons are the most powerful, and as such, the hierarchy resembles the feudal system. There's bishops, lords, servants, etc., and even a special class of rhyming demons, the most notable of which being Etrigan. Over the years, though, corporate influences started creeping in, such as this one boss-esque demon who is trading on a sort of stock market with Hell's currency, souls. Souls are a huge deal in Hell. Obviously, the more rare the soul, the better. In fact, the infamous wizard John Constantine once sold his soul to three different demons who were all more than eager to take the deal. What more is there to really say? We've gone over Hell's history, its location in the multiverse, its countries, and its freaking socio-economic structure. What more is there to talk about? Uh, its cell phone service? Oh yeah. How could I possibly forget about that? It's freaking Booster Gold. So, yeah, one time Booster Gold was angry at some of his teammates, so when he was playing around with some of Dr. Fate's mystical artifacts, he jokingly pretended to banish him and his teammates to Hell. But, he actually did. Thus, the team was forced to work at a Big Belly Burger, because apparently the company also has a location in Hell. Oh, and in that same comic, we learned that it is possible to get cell phone reception in Hell, but only through Verizon. Yeah, I don't think we can top that. Well, alright then. I know I've mentioned it a couple times in the video, but if you haven't already, please check out my video on Lucifer. I think it is really good, and one of the best things I've ever produced on the channel. But if you want to see another amazing video, which is done by my great co-host, Mr. Pasta, then click this annotation right here for one of his super creepy story times. It is guaranteed to make your skin crawl. But until next time, see you guys.